some of you came from a very exciting new features uh, Ruth and Andrea show, um, but we are here at Batches, Baskets, Buckets, and Book Bags uh, with Elizabeth Thompson from Noble. I'm Kate Coleman from Missouri Evergreen. I will be moderating this session. Uh, we do want to shout out our sponsors. Equinox is our platform sponsor. ECDI is our captioning sponsor. And I will be putting that link in the chat as soon as Elizabeth gets started. And Kipu is our uh, sponsor for the Hackfest tomorrow. So Elizabeth, I will stop sharing my screen in just a second and then you can share yours. Okay. Okay, you should be sharing, seeing my screen. We do. Okay, and I will get started. So we're gonna be talking about batches, baskets, buckets, and book bags. I had carousels added on, but carousels are really just a special use of, of book bags and they spoiled the uh, alliteration. Uh, and what we're talking about is things that are containers, uh, one way or another, of items or bibliographic records. So for items, there's something I'm just calling a batch, which is a temporary group of items pulled together for a particular task, but there's no container involved. They're, they're just a, a way to pull things together. Um, and then there's also item buckets, which is a way to put a group of items in a container that stays on the system until the bucket is deleted. And for bibliographic records, there are baskets, which is a temporary group, a group of, whoops, not items, uh, title records, bibliographic records. Um, and that goes away when you clear the basket or end the, your evergreen session. Uh, but the persistent things are record buckets, uh, which is a, um, a container again, like item buckets, only for bibliographic records, and it stays on the system till the bucket is deleted. And book bags, which are um, a, a patron version of of uh, record buckets, um, known as my lists to the patron. And then carousels, which are buckets used for just one thing, but it's a really good thing. So for item batches, um, the this is good for a project where you need to bring together a group of items, usually in the item status uh, screen, um, because you need to do something with them. You need to edit them in some way, you need to mark them all missing or update the inventory date or or, or change some, some data that, that's in them or all sorts of things, move them to a different shelving location. Um, items can be scanned or uploaded from a file into item status and they can be used to do all sorts of things, but the batch that you're creating is not persistent. Uh, you close that tab and it, it is gone. So this is the item status screen. Um, I have loaded a file, a text file of, of barcodes. Um, you can also upload, uh, enter a scan, a single barcode here, or additional barcodes or uh, barcodes that are separated with commas. Uh, but however you do it, they, they, uh, they end up filling up the screen here. We've got lots of different options here about what, what uh, columns we want to have, have displaying. So here's my batch. I've just scanned all of these, or in my case, uploaded a text file. And they're all here waiting for me to do something with them. And a very common thing is that you scan them all, you're going to select them all, and then you're going to do one of the actions for them. And this screen is incredibly useful because there are so many different actions from uh, things like uh, triggering holds or marking things as damaged or, or making them bookable, all, all sorts of things. Some of these things I've never done. Um, and you often are bringing them together so that you can do the same action to all of them. Just wanted to show you all of the possible actions. This is a very long action menu, uh, but that's why this is um, such a useful way of working with items. And within my batch, I, I said you might be selecting all of them and doing the same thing to all of them, uh, but you might not. You might have 
um, things that all belong to a certain project. These are all books and, and uh, media about the sun and the moon pulled together for the eclipse. Um, but you may be wanting to do some different things. So maybe these children's nonfiction, you're going to take one action on and you're going to do something a little different to the children's picture books. You can kind of make mini batches often within your 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 batch that you've scanned um, by using uh, by sorting. So here I sorted by location and that brought all the first readers and the nonfiction and the picture books and stuff together. Um, sometimes you want to um, sort by status because you might be doing something different to the items that are available and the items that are checked out. Maybe for the items that are checked out, you're adding a um, an item alert so that they'll be sent to cataloging uh, when they're returned. But here I've I've selected uh, the items that are um, children's nonfiction, and I uh, oh, I think I'm missing a screen here. But I I chose to edit them all, and when I chose the action to edit them, it opened that in a new tab. It, it gave me all my options for editing this, whatever I wanted to change. And I was able to, on that other screen that has the, the full holdings editor, um, I was able to save it. And now I'm back over here. And these children's nonfiction things are still in this batch because I, this may be something else that I want to do to every, every one of them in addition to whatever change I made it to the children's nonfiction. And this little kind of save and check mark um, option is telling me that the um, that the change I made to them in that other screen uh, has has been made. Uh, so it's just a, um, a a way to kind of um, see the status within this batch. Um, it gets confusing because it says status and it's not an item status. It's just a um, a little indicator that that you've already taken care of one element of, of your, your project. And now you can do something different to the picture books or do something the same to all of these or whatever else you need to do on this screen. Uh, the other thing you can do when you have that grid, you've got that grid with all of your items on it, um, you can um, configure the grid so we can turn on or off what, what uh, columns we want to see on that. Um, and if we if we want to save those changes, so we're adding and removing certain columns, if we want that to be our new default, we have to remember to save the columns. Um, but often you might be uh, changing what displays on that field on that screen, what columns display because of a particular project. So that particular project may have to do with um, you know certain elements of data and not others. Um, you have the option here to print or to download the full CSV uh, from everything that's that's uh, in your batch, and your your printing whatever you print or what ends up in the CSV depends on which things you have showing. So if I want to have due date or acquisitions cost in my CSV file, I need to turn those on on the screen. And if I don't need item status for whatever it is I'm doing, I can turn that off. And once you download the CSV, you can open it in Excel or Google Sheets. And, and that often gives you a way to um, do some other kinds of statistics on that and pivot tables showing various things and, and all of that. So this can be a really handy way to, to get the data and then move it over into a program that is more powerful. So that's just a batch, working with a, a batch. Uh, when a batch isn't enough is when you are going to want to pull those items together again. So the batch lives in the moment and it disappears when you close the tab. And that's fine if the project is, we're going to transfer these particular books into a new science fiction section. So these are uh, adult fiction, but we're gonna have a science fiction section. And so these are gonna be moved into that, that section and it, it's a permanent move and there's no intent that you'll ever be moving them back or, or, or need to be able to work with those same items um, again. 
but there are a lot of projects in a library where you are moving things into a display or you're making going to treat them in some special way um, that for summer reading, but you're going to want to go restore them to where they were um, after the fact. And uh, or it may be an ongoing project. You're putting together groups of items that you're going to use on a Black History Month display. And this is going to take place over several days, maybe as you're as you're pulling things together. Um, so for something like that, the solution is to put the items into an item bucket. And that's a group of items that'll stay on the system that you can share with other staff and that will be there um, until you delete them um, or until your user account is, is deleted. So here I have that same batch of things. Um, I scan them. I may or may not have done some editing on them, but if I want to put all of them, I guess this is a different batch, but if I want to put all of them, or in this case, just the biographies, um, someplace where I can go find them again, I can click here to add them to, the item, to an item bucket. And when you do that, it asks you if you want to um, choose one of the buckets that you already have, and this would be a drop down, and I would see a list of buckets that I've already created, or I can start a new bucket and give it a title like biography project. So if this is my biography project, I may be back in three or four days with another batch of items, and I would scan those into item status, and then I would choose my existing project, which at that point will be my biography project. And you can, uh, I went through item status, but you can go directly to item buckets. That's where you go when you want to look for your item buckets to open them and use them for some point. And you can also start a bucket that way. Um, so this is the item bucket interface. Before you open this uh, drop down, there's, there's uh, not a lot here. Um, the things that you can do here is I can come here and create a new bucket. So I can click on that and give it a name. Um, I can edit a bucket I've already created uh, for, for one reason or another. So I have this April Jazz Month display and I want to change that to April Jazz and Blues Week display or whatever. I want to edit that for some reason. You can, you can uh, delete a bucket um, or you can uh, open a shared bucket, and I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Um, so here I am creating a, a bucket. This is a picture book project. Um, it's a very good idea to use the description. This is a sort of honestly kind of do as I say, not as I do, uh, but it's very helpful to um, uh, put a, a date that this project, so this is a, a project that was going on last summer and to put something about what it is. And that's helpful for uh, if you're sharing it with somebody else. And it's also helpful for yourself when you come back to one of these and you can't remember what you created this bucket for and, and, uh, and what it means. Um, you can mark these as shareable. If you mark something as shareable, it can be accessed by any staff member or any staff member in your in your org unit. How this works is uh, dependent on you checking this, but also how your system has the view container um, permission set up. Now, the option to open a shared bucket is um, is is confusing to people. It makes you think that there is such a thing as a shared bucket. Um, that you should, that is shared with you. All shared bucket do, does is it says, oh, you want to open a shared bucket? What's the bucket ID? And if I enter the bucket, bucket ID, so this is the one that I want to uh, open and I know it's bucket ID is here. Um, but if I type those numbers in, it will load that even if somebody else created it. So the sharing of buckets from one person to another is me sending you a message saying, hey, look at the children's relocation project I'm doing. It's, it's bucket 2752, and then you can open it. Um, you can also add items here, um, add items to an existing a bucket or a new item bucket that you've just set up. Um, and the uh, way to do that 
is to go to pending items on that screen and uh, scan your items in there. And when you finish scanning your items, then you can uh, move them to do the bucket. Um, it's the scanning barcodes, they don't have the option here to upload a file or whatever. So if you have a file and that's what you want to use, you're better off going back over to item status and then adding the things to a bucket. Elizabeth, we do have a question. Yeah. Um, they want to know, Jeremiah wants to know, even just a list with the names and IDs? Um, to, uh, to upload the file? To, um, to upload a file here, um, what you would be using is a, um, a file of barcodes. And then all of it, um, and then when you load that, it'll, it'll uh, fill the grid with the titles and all of that other information. Does, does that answer that question? Sorry, he, he specified it was not a question, but a comment on shared bucket oh. functionality. So apologies. Oh, that's fine. Um, you can also be uh, looking at an item. I'm, I've got an item open here. And one of the actions for this is to add the item to a bucket. So uh, for the Black History Month thing or whatever, you may be um, doing some shopping in the database, looking around for things or, or scanning individual items of the things that you've pulled off the shelf or, or whatever. Um, but getting things, um, adding them to an item bucket is easy to do. Um, I'm here in the bucket view and I, I can select a group of things and, and take actions. Uh, but as you see, the, the list here is shorter. So I can edit selected items. I can edit call numbers. I can do some of these things, but I can't do all of the things that I could do over an item status. Uh, but fortunately, open an item status is one of the options here. So if what I was trying to do was mark these missing or do something else that's not over here, I just open them in item status and, and do whatever I'm trying to do uh, there. So that's about it for, for item records. Um, and now we're going to talk about bibliographic records, title records. And there's a temporary group, which is baskets. So when you're in the staff catalog or in the public catalog, um, there's a basket that can be used to do things like place holds on a batch of titles or to, um, uh, to make a, a, a uh, to do a book list of them using uh, my list or do uh, all sorts of other things with them. Um, again, the basket, like the, uh, like the, like the uh, um, item thing <laughs> is temporary, the batch is temporary. So um, the records will stay in the basket until you clear them or until your evergreen session ends. So here I am in the staff catalog, and the way I add items to a basket is by selecting them here. So I'm looking for books on polar bears. I might have selected this one, and then this one, and then this one, but then I, in which case it would say three for the basket, but then I decide, well, I don't like the cover so much of this one. I'm going to deselect this one by unchecking it. So you go through screen after screen for a single search term, or you can search for particular books by title and then, and then uh, uh, check them here. Um, but everything that you select over here is in your basket and it's very dynamic. So if I unchecked this, it would go down to one. And if I check something else, it would, it would go up. So it's, it's, um, it, it's just anything you check is going to, to go in there. And if I did a different search and I searched for grizzly bears, so I don't have anything to do with polar bears, but my polar bear books will still be in the basket um, until I clear it or until um, I leave my evergreen session. Um, one very useful thing to do is to, um, if you're in the staff client, is to go select a group of records. You're talking to the client and saying, oh, yeah, how do you feel about Magic Treehouse or, or whatever? You, so you're selecting things. You've got the things they want in a basket. And then you click on place hold. And because you have a basket full, it, it's going to ask me the usual question. Am I placing this for the patron's barcode or, or for myself? 
And it's showing me all of these and I can click here and it will place the hold on all of them. And it will, oops, I thought I had another screen there. Um, if the, if some of these can't be placed, it will tell you that. So you will get the same um, failure message or, or, or uh, other message um, for, for everything that's in that, that batch. Um, record buckets are the persistent version of that. Uh, so you have been using the, you've put a bunch of things in the basket and you want to save those. You want to save those because you want to come back and work more on them tomorrow, or you want to do something with them, uh, you know, that you, um, they need to be edited in some way or for whatever reason you want to keep them. Um, and uh, one of the uses of, of, of buckets, record buckets is it's the only way to merge duplicate bib records. So you may have found three different edition, three different records for the same edition of great expectations and you want to put them in a bucket and then, then take care of merging them. And they're also used for batch editing bibliographic records and for creating carousels. So I'm here in this Angular staff client and I am um, selecting things and putting them in my basket. Um, I can, you know, select a whole page and that will put um, all of the records on that page um, into my basket. Um, there's also a very handy uh, feature here that doesn't exist in the old staff catalog that is add all search results. So here I'm looking for books about Alzheimer's or dementia. And I want everything. I want to find all of those, those things wherever they are. I didn't limit it in any other way. Um, and I have their 187 records and I'm only seeing 10 at a time on the screen. So I could page through them and do each one, but I can also just click here to add all those search results um, to my basket. And Elizabeth, we have a yeah. question. Yeah. Can you share a basket with a patron? Maybe you already mentioned this, but I missed it. Um, you can't share a basket with a patron. You could use, you could do a my list even though you're a staff member, um, you can do that, a patron type list, and you can share that with them. Or you can be using some other tool that creates um, a, a list. But I don't believe there's a, a direct way to, to share a, um, a, a basket or, or a bucket with a patron. They do, you do have other options there um, that I didn't show, which are um, email the the uh, information about the the items that you've selected and and I think there's a download option as well. Um, so when I have my my uh, when I say that I want to add those to a bucket, I've got some choices here. Again, I can choose the an existing bucket. So this will be a drop down of all the buckets that I own that I created. I can do a new bucket and I can also do a shared bucket. And this is also better than the old staff client because there was that had an option to add to an existing bucket or a new bucket, but not to add to a shared bucket. Um, and so if I chose the shared bucket, I would put in one, two, seven, three or whatever I knew was a, a shared bucket. But this gives members of a staff an easy way to be creating a bucket together kind of right in the in the staff catalog. So I'm looking for, you know, children's books about this particular topic, but my colleague is looking for adult books and somebody else is looking for for um, DVDs or whatever. And as we find them, we can all add them to that same shared bucket. Because we and know Elizabeth, the number of it. Yep. If you have more than one person working in a shared bucket and say, you know, you're, you're editing these or, or whatever. And if one person deletes it out of the bucket, um, that that's live for everyone to it see is, that it's gone. There are zero controls over what happens with, with a bucket like that. So if somebody has a number of a shared bucket, even if they type the number wrong, um, again, depending on how, how you have the sharing set up, um, they're going to be able to do things to it. But let me get to my last slide, and that will have some excellent news about the direction this is taking. Um, 
so uh, I can go to Record Buckets directly. I can come here. It's in the, at the cataloging menu. It's probably on your portal page. Um, so here I can I can see. Um, Oh, I sort of skipped a step. Anyway, that's where I can go to open a, 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 my buckets. Um, this is something different. I see I skipped a, a slide. Um, one way to create a bucket, a record bucket, is you have the option here to do a query. Um, and so you can express your query here in in uh, Boolean logic. So the the pipe pipe is is the is what Postgres uses as um, an OR. Um, and you'll get your results and they'll open here um, and then you can put them into a bucket or go through and select ones that are, that are really relevant. Um, and I mentioned that because um, you could do the same sort of Boolean searching in um, just in the in the catalog itself. Um, but the Boolean searching in the catalog, it, um, it, it may be easier to do things this way. Um, and so here are some samples of, of things that, that, that I've done. So this one is show me anything that has the uh, subject heading that has ocean or oceanography or oceanographer or whatever. So I'm using that. And that the site is Wakefield. So I'm looking for everything that the Wakefield library owns that is related to that. And you can do fancy um, things using the parentheses and stuff. So I'm looking for Christmas in the Netherlands, but I know that this word might be Netherlands or Dutch or Holland and, and so on. Um, so this can be an easy way to pull together a, a lot of things um, quickly. Um, it is, uh, it if you, you are using electronic resources, it, it uh, it understands the located URIs, which are in there uh, and so on. But there is a limit. I think the limit is a thousand. We raised ours to, I think, three or 4,000, maybe 5,000, um, because we use this to do a lot of um, uh, searches across the, the, the whole consortium. So in, in April for, for autism um, acceptance month, I might do a search like this and find everything in all of our libraries that has uh, either a keyword or a subject heading of autism. And I'm truncating here to also get autistic people and so on. And when I pull that together, we have tools that we can run that through and, and show libraries how much, what they have holdings and, and so on. Um, you can add, uh, you know, I, I was showing that you do a search for a title and you uh, you can add it from the search results. But if you go directly to a record, um, you can also add it uh, to a bucket directly. Um, again, here, now I'm in a, a record bucket, um, the bucket view. Um, I can uh, select a group of them. I can use that same sort of um, sorting by author or, or uh, title or, or whatever. Um, and there are some actions for it. There were far fewer actions here than you have um, with, with items. And that's just the nature, the difference between, between those. So I can remove some of these from the, <laughs> from the catalog um, or remove them from the bucket. And that is um, a, a difference to be aware of. It will stop you if you're trying to delete them and, and uh, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, it can be used to transfer title holds or to merge selected records. Um, and you can also export the records in uh, MARC format if you're sending these to a, to a vendor or doing or using them in, in MARC edit. Um, this is merge how you merge two records. Um, so I have two records that are Gone Girl. They looked like the same edition to me. I, I want to merge them so that the holds don't get split. I determine which one I want to use as the lead record. Um, this is a, a great screen if you're a cataloger because it shows both records next to each other and makes it easy for you to see which record is more complete or are these really the same and, and so on. And then you, um, uh, you can just... Um, uh, you know, click on the button to actually merge them. Um, the re 
remove from consideration is useful if you have three or four different records and you determine that, well, this one doesn't belong in this set. This one's actually different. So you can remove that and then merge the others. Uh, this is baskets for patrons. So I'm a patron, I'm logged into my um, account, I'm searching the catalog, and I am checking things off. As I check things off, um, they're putting them into the, the basket for me. And I've got basket options. And one of the basket options for patron is to place holds. And if I do that, um, I'm placing the holds. So it's telling me which titles I'm placing the hold on. And oh, and it would have told me um, if all the holds were successful, or if there was one of the holds that couldn't be couldn't be placed. Um, the other thing I can do as a patron is I've I I have my items here. I've got three items in a um, in a, a basket, and I can add these to a saved list. So as a patron, I might already have a saved list or I might be um, saving them to a new list. Uh, so here's what the list interface looks like for patrons. So patron can, can uh, name it anything they want, uh, give a description, um, and they can determine whether they want to share it or not. Sharing lists in, in the patron world really means change it to this, so that has an HTML view and it has a URL that can be shared. Um, and if I wanted to unshare this one, Matt Bird's books, uh, uh, Matt Bird's birds, I could come back over here and hide this. So hide and share are the, the two options for uh, the patrons have. So a patron could be making a list of books that they're going to use with a scout troop or a class or or their their reading group or whatever. And when they're ready and to, to make it public, they can click on this and then they can share that URL and and people can go to it and look at what they've done. Um, and this is what that list, list looks like when it's shared. Um, and sharing this with the with other patrons, so with this person could put this on their blog or, or whatever. Um, other patrons coming to see it will have the option of placing a hold or adding it to their list and, and then placing a hold or, or so on. Um, you can open a my list as a bucket in the staff web client. When I looked at that other view, if I were looking at the URL for the book bag, um, I would see it a, um, a URL that has some information here and that has a book bag ID in it. So if you come here and say that you're going to upload a, a uh, oh, this is, they fixed this error, uh, you're loading a shared bucket bucket by ID. Um, I can put that in and say load bucket. And now it looks exactly like a real bucket, a staff client bucket. Um, so if a patron uh, put together a whole lot of wonderful books about some particular topic, um, and they would like to uh, let us use that, we could open that um, and turn that into a bucket and then turn it into a carousel or do other kinds of, of things with it. And staff can also use the my list option they can either log into the OPAC using their evergreen credentials, their username and password, um, um, or well, I guess that's the main way that they would get to that. And um, they can do that. And there are some libraries where um, there are staff people who don't have the authorizations to do a lot of other stuff, but they um, certainly know how to pull together a group of records that they're using for a uh, um, a display or to, or or whatever, uh, and uh, you know, then then other people can use it as a uh, for other purposes. Oh, this is staff can do this too, and here's staff uh, um, doing this, giving it a title, determining whether it's going to be shared or not, um, and and uh, you know, here's here's the 
items from the basket and the ability to remove them and sort them and so on. And that's what this looks like. Creating a carousel from a bucket is, um, it is very easy. So here I was doing a bucket. I created a bucket called Nordic Noir. And I was putting in um, some books that are set in, you know, that are dark mysteries set in Sweden, Norway, Iceland, um, or Denmark. And I've been collecting them here. And when I'm ready, I can, one of my options is to create a carousel. So these are the carousels that can appear on the, the main page of the, um, of your catalog screen. Um, so if I choose create carousel from bucket, I can override my name. I called it Nordic Noir, but now I'm thinking like, perhaps I should call it Dark Tales from the Land of the Midnight Sun. So I, I give it that name that I want to have actually appear and I create my carousel and I have to take another step to make it live on my, uh, um, on my, sh my screen. So I um, have these here. Uh, I need to add this one and I can, as I add them, I can um, give them an order. Um, so that I can put which one's on top and which one's not on top and so on. Uh, these ones with uh, funny looking names are things that came out of our list maker um, session. And, and uh, uh, that's, that's why I have some ones with funny looking names. Um, the carousel is currently, but, but it changes in a release. It's, it's making a copy of Rather than just use that bucket uh, to make the carousel, it makes a copy of that bucket to be used for the carousel. And it tells you that's what it's doing. Um, it was very confusing when they worked this way. And depending on what release you're on, yours may or may not um, be working this way or maybe just using the, the carousel it itself, uh, the, the bucket itself as the carousel. And it matters because you might want to come back here and remove a couple of things that you now realize didn't really fit that and you want to remove them from the carousel, but you have to make sure you're doing the carousel one and not, uh, not the bucket that was copied to make this. And um, that's about it. So we talked about um, the temporary things, um, just a batch for, for items and a basket for, um, for bibliographic records and the buckets, which are persistent and stay on the system and are owned by you, um, until you, until the, um, until you leave the system or you delete them or your system might have some, some limits on that. And then the book bag, which is the patron version of those. And, um, now I want to tell you about some changes that are coming. The Evergreen Community Development Initiative, ECDI, is working with Equinox. We have a contract with them on a multi-phase project to improve buckets, um, starting with angularizing record buckets. So that's the bibliographic record buckets, but that is only phase one of what we see as a, as a, a multi-phase project. Um, this whole project is going to address many launchpad bugs, including favorites like being able to um, upload bib IDs or TCNs to a bucket. And it's going to add features commonly found in other sharing sites. If you use things like, if you've used things like Dropbox or, or, or Google Drive or, or any of those things, people have some expectations. So it's going to add explicit sharing. So instead of I'm sharing this with you by saying, hey, here's the number, now you have access to it, um, you'll be able to share with an individual or with a group. So share with everybody in your org unit or, or share with these three people, um, which we, we see as the start of being able to say, this person can view it, this person can edit it, um, and this person can delete it, those kinds of things. The ability to favor a favorite, mark a, a bucket as a favorite, 
um, so that maybe I have my, I want to keep many different buckets because they're being used for many different projects, or I want to keep that Black History Month list, I want to keep that bucket for next year, because then it's the basis of um, what I have, but I don't need to look at it um, all the time. So you'll be able to favorite, just like in Google Docs and things, you can put a star on something, and that'll make it easier to find those. And it will also um, add to the to a um, uh, to the staff client, when you're looking at a staff client, at the staff client, and you're doing searches, um, you'll be able to see in a sidebar your favorited buckets, which probably means they're the current buckets or the buckets you're currently um, interested in working with. And from the search results, you'll be able to add things to those uh, buckets that are in your sidebar with, with just a, a simple button. Um, and there's, there's much more, there's much more here. And, and this is only the beginning of really totally rewriting the, the bucket interface and addressing those things that one of which came up here of, you know, can you protect your bucket from somebody else, you know, accidentally removing things from it or deleting it or renaming it or whatever. So, you know, we'll be building in that kind of, uh, that kind of security. And, I can share with you the functional specifications that that uh, uh, EDI has. Um, a lot of this is technical, but my favorite part is to come down to page 13, where they have all the mockups. And the mockups themselves are also scattered around with explanations of them. Um, but to me, just looking at these, so this would be looking at um, a grid of the of the um, the buckets, which ones are starred, which ones are shared, um, how many items are in them, um, uh, when it was created, and then options to do things like delete them, share them, all of that stuff. And here's the uh, part where you can um, share a bucket and who you're going to share it with. And here is creating um, a bucket by uploading TCNs or bib IDs. And here's um, the staff catalog um, and these buckets, and they each have a, an add one thing so that you can come over here and just add these to, to the bucket that you're currently working on. Um, and you see that you've got a, a toggle here for the sidebar between facets or the buckets display. So, I think we're going to see um, all types of buckets benefit from a complete rewrite. I, you know, buckets are one of the most useful features on the system, um, uh, useful for all kinds of different purposes. Um, but they are the interface is 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 kind of clunky, kind of old school. Um, and uh, rewriting all of this into Angular and adding all of the features that people now expect because they're used to being able to specifically share things with, you know, actual individuals and and to mark things as their favorites and so on. I, I just think this is, I you know, I can't wait to do this session next year. And um, uh, Equinox is having their kickoff meeting for this development um, next week, and then the coding begins. And uh, um, you know, we're we're very excited about um, about the direction that they're taking with with um, with buckets. Any questions? And We've had some good conversation in the chat. Um, <laughs> I, I know there's always a... this like whole other discussion going on. That, yeah. That, yeah. Um, Jacob Ingalls asks, will it generate an email to notify that a bucket has been shared with you? Um, in the new, in the new development? Um, it, it Currently nothing is shared with you. Um, I don't know if uh, specifically if, if uh, you'll be you'll be notified, I'm pretty sure you'll be notified one way or another. Um, but um, I I don't I haven't seen that um, necessarily in the in the uh, uh, specs. But the but the specs are all there, um, so you can see them as as well. We're able to to share them. Oh, Andrea, I, there you yeah. are. 
I don't think that's actually part of this work, a specific notification, um, but I would have to to double check. Yeah, I don't think it is either, but um, you know, we hope this is going to be a multi-phase project and that, that uh, um, you know, you'll get the real basics in in the first phase and then it'll be much easier to add um, other things. I, I don't um, think Jack it is, but yeah, this is, this is like Elizabeth said, this is very much, um, there is so much that could be done with buckets that needs to be done with buckets. As Elizabeth says, it is probably the most useful, one of the most useful interfaces. There's a lot that needs to be fixed and we're just trying to take it in chunks. So, but that would actually be a really great wish list bug if that doesn't already exist. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, the idea here wasn't to um, fix a couple of individual bugs, because there's, frankly, there's no point in fixing individual bugs in old soft, you know, old uh, uh, platforms and, and all of that. But I, I'm, uh, you know, I think this is going to make it easier to add new features and, and we'll, you know, we'll, uh, once people see the things they can do with favoriting things and all of that, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of, of uh, new ideas that they want. Um, Jeremiah asked, <clears throat> can one specify a single carousel for inclusion on external site? Um, can it, yeah. Uh, yeah, in a release that is uh, beyond the one that Noble is currently on, um, you can, or maybe maybe where um, you can copy and use a carousel on a on an external site. We have not done that, um, but now I wish I had done that before this session. Um, Ruth has said that she would love to be able to remove duplicates. Um, does that? Do you mean? in record buckets if there if there are duplicates in record buckets because we did have a comment earlier that said somebody said that they believe that you could add the same copy or the same record twice into a record bucket do you and, know if that's uh that is probably true yeah. um there are you know here's what i think is going to happen Phase one of the development is going to get done. Phase one is going to be released. We'll, I hope we're then already starting working on, on uh, phase two specs and all of that, but um, that's gonna cause people to like look at buckets again and look at them a whole new way. And they're gonna write a whole bunch of new launch pad bugs to add all kinds of other features that are sort of unleashed by the, the uh, the fact that it is reminding people of how Google Docs work and how this works and how that works and and all of that and that we'll see um, you know a, a real um, um, th that this will just continue to grow and to be uh, a, a very strong tool for all kinds of purposes. Yeah, and some of that um, should be we're not we're not doing item buckets in this iteration. Right. So, but the um, the I know that the duplicate items in the bucket is specifically on ECDI's requirements list for when we get to item buckets like that. This bug is lit specifically called out, so it will get there. Yes, and and our dream is that all types of buckets are you know are moved into this and all benefit from the same sorts of of tools to manage them and to to uh, to do this. And people have done amazing things with buckets. We use you know buckets constantly, um, but <laughs> you know when when you remove the part where like oh you have to in the down in the list of of buckets, it's sorted alphabetically, but the lowercase ones come after the uppercase ones, or, you know, as soon as you remove those little like barriers, usability, just annoyances, um, people are just going to fall in love with buckets all over again. I can attest as a cataloger that buckets um, are priceless. I mean, th they have so many uses. <clears throat> Well, wait till we wait till we get them. <laughs> yeah, even better. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, you know, I. I just. I just. Uh, really see this as. Uh, as. As something, and I was very happy to be able to include this. Um, you know, the the coding is not quite started yet, but it will be very shortly. And, you know, I. 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 Um, I'm glad to be able to bring you this kind of good news. Literally next week.
We have uh, had lots of thank yous and accolades that this has been a great presentation, Elizabeth, to no one's surprise, certainly not <laughs> mine. Um, and lots of people saying that you've really opened up the power of buckets for them, so. Um, okay, okay, well that, I mean, you know, that's, that's great. And I, you know, I, I really, again, I can't wait till next year and see where we are with, uh, with all of this. Um, and you know where I am. I'm I'm et at noblenet.org. And I, if you have any other questions or any of that, I would love to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, as 